A reading from Mark's Gospel today, the 10th chapter. Listen now for the word of the Lord. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Minister was walking down the street one time, and uh, he noticed a small boy across the street, at at a house across the street, trying to ring a doorbell. And um, this, this boy was quite small and couldn't quite reach the doorbell. He kept straining and trying, and the minister was quite touched by this and, and, and decided, he, he watched for a little while, then decided he would cross the street and, and help the boy out. So he, he, he walked up behind the boy and, and, and placed his hand gently on the boy's shoulder and, and touched the doorbell and gave it a, a nice, good, solid ring. And then he squatted down and, and looked the, the, the boy square in the face and said, what now, little man? This earnest child looked back at the minister and said, Now we run! (laughs) Children are wonderful. (laughs) Not perfect, but wonderful, wonderful. When Jesus says that we must be like a child in order to uh, be worthy of or to enter into the kingdom of heaven... He's talking about an innocence here, right? Not, not, not a sinlessness, but an innocence. There's a, a meekness, a, a gentleness, a, a sense of almost being unaware of, of evil or the dangers of the world. There's a sense of trust, right, that, that, that children will often uh, display, that we adults might have a harder time, right? And, 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 and we're not going to idolize children either, right? We, we know that there are certain, as we said, they're not, they're not sinless. They're, they can be uh, self-focused, right, as is age-appropriate. De- it's developmentally appropriate for them to test boundaries, right, or, or sometimes see what they can get away with in certain situations. But for all that, there's an earnestness And there's a, there's, a, there's a pureness of being, isn't there? When we think about the church and, and, and the purposes of the church, certainly one of the great purposes of the church is to pass down our faith to future generations, to, to raise and nurture younger ones in the faith. Children in return remind us of the joy of learning about God. Children inspire us as parents and teachers um, with their trust in us that reminds us to be trustworthy as well. And, and, and we're not perfect, certainly. We say that each week. But we, we also live in that each week, I'm sure. Uh, but they inspire us to be better because, you know, what's worse than betraying the trust of a child. Now, I I know that that for many of us, uh, childhood may not have been exactly uh, like that. Maybe maybe our trust wasn't um, rewarded. Maybe we carry wounds of betrayal or harm or abandonment from our childhood. And for that, I'm sad 
for those of you who that's the case. We acknowledge that and we, we honor those wounds that many of us carry that, that make trusting God harder, right? But hang in there. God will not give up on you or your relationship. Keep trying. Keep praying. Because God clearly and dearly wants a relationship with you. And here's why we should keep trying. We're, as, as my children might say, we're going to use our imagination today. Imagine what might change in our lives, our hearts, our church, our community, the world, right? If we trusted God, like we see parents of these little ones and these little ones trusting Jesus in our passage. Now, I know I, I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm always preaching to the choir at First Presbyterian Church. <laughs> we trust God. Of course we do. But what would happen if we really, really trusted God? Deep down in, in our being, what, what if in our prayer life, for instance, and we've been talking about prayer a lot lately, we went to God with who we are completely. That, that we were open and honest and vulnerable and trusting like a child in our prayer life with God. What might change in us and what might change in our world? What might change in our souls if we approach God with that kind of trust? What would the next season of life here at the church be like if we did this? And what would change in the world if more people prayed that earnestly, that openly, that humbly? How much closer might God seem to us in the world? And how much closer might God's reign be for us in the world if more trusted God to pray with that kind of posture of heart? That's the powerful thing about this kind of prayer. And, 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 and meekness and humility are things that Christ seems to honor, right? Right? He spoke about these things a lot. He said, all who humble themselves will be exalted. And it's not just Jesus who says this. In the Bible, we find that such uh, sentiments elsewhere. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, that those who earnestly sought God, were, we were told, would find God. In First Chronicles, it, it, it says that when we seek God and trust and humility, we will find joy. And, and it says, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord Rejoice. This is, this is a seeking that is earnest, but this is also a seeking that is honest on our parts. We're going to God with who we really are. We're going to God with how we struggle. We're going to God with feelings that we maybe like, but maybe also don't like. We're going to God with the things about ourselves that we feel good about. We're going to God honestly with struggles that we have that we wish we could let go of. Because God will surely make God's self known to us if we seek the Lord that earnestly with all of our being. When we approach the Lord with humility and faith. When we trust. When we are humble. When we are earnestly seeking God in that way. God will show God's self to us. Now, in case we still aren't sure, 
that our heavenly parent can be trusted. Let's talk about making yourself known. Let's talk about God showing God's self. Because I think there may be no truer image of God than what we see in Mark chapter 10. Theologians have spoken throughout the ages about this, to- this, uh, this term called revelation. You've probably heard the term. Maybe you know what revelation is. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have an idea what it is. But it, revelation isn't just like a light bulb going off and suddenly you have an idea. Revelation is when we see something about God, when something about God is made known to us. Now, we can find revelation in a variety of places. Revelation, we can look outside and see the glory of nature, and that is a form of revelation, God's creation. Sometimes when we dream, we have experienced some kind of revelation, right? God spoke through dreams uh, to Joseph in the Bible and to others. Sometimes there's revelation in things that our friend's uh, wise counsel, uh, that a friend gives us, right? Well, theologians say that the, the, the most uh, precious or direct or special is another term they use, form of revelation is the Word of God. The Word of God can be the Bible, and it is the Bible. But the Word of God is also Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the most direct, the most special form of revelation we can have. What what they're saying, what we are saying when we say that, is that if we want a true image of who God is, look at Jesus Christ, and you will see who God is. You will see what God looks like. You will see what God's heart is like. Because God is, Jesus is God. Jesus is one with God. And Jesus is God, Scripture tells us. And so if you want to know what God is like, think about Jesus Christ reaching down and picking up the children that have been brought to him to be blessed. And tenderly embracing them, and loving them, and blessing them. If you want to know who God is, look at that image. That's a revelation. That's who our God is. I mean, isn't that the kind of Jesus that we want? Isn't that the kind of God that we want? A God who can be trusted in our meekness, in our vulnerability, in, in, in our sense of innocence or naivete, also in our sense of selfishness and self-centeredness. Don't we want a Jesus that cradles us in his arms? Well, I've got some really good news for you. That's exactly who God is. We can trust this Lord. We can pray like we trust this Lord with all of who we are. We can trust this Lord with our spirits. We can trust this Lord with our hearts, even the broken and tender places in our hearts. We can trust this Lord with the, 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 the hidden and and places in our souls, we can approach this God openly, honestly, knowing that we'll be received like that too, cradled in Christ's arms. Amen.